Hi, I'm Bob Benedetti, the founder of the New Mexico Actors Lab and currently the managing director. I'd like to tell you something about uh, how I came to found the lab. Uh, my wife and I moved here to Santa Fe uh, almost 11 years ago, and we expected to find more theater here than we did because uh, there had been three equity companies a couple of them fairly long-lived, uh, all of which were run by former students of mine, uh, particularly Andrew Shea and Martin Platt. And so I was quite surprised to find that uh, theater had, in a sense, fallen out of favor and was a, a stepchild to some of the other arts. I was still active as a teacher and the Screen Actors Guild asked me to do a workshop for its members, uh, which I did. And uh, Robert Redford's Milagro project was uh, going out at Las Luceras uh, to uh, help develop Native American talent. And my former student, Ed Harris, had been working with them, but couldn't come back for workshops. And he recommended that I replace him, which I did. And it was at these workshops that I ran into Nicholas Ballas, who had been a graduate student when I was dean at the California Institute of the Arts. And uh, through him, I began to meet other really good theater people who were sort of lying fellow in those days. And so we got together. The original core group was. Uh, Nico and Jonathan Richards, Barbara Hatch, Suzanne Lederer, and a couple of other people who have moved on. And uh, we put together our first program in 2015, which was uh, Santa Fe Shake Scenes. I'm sorry, it was 2014, how time flies. Uh, Santa Fe Shake Scenes, which was uh, three programs of scenes from Shakespeare that I arranged around topics like honor, uh, justice, and the most popular one was the evolution of Shakespeare's clowns and fools. Response was so great um, that we were encouraged to keep at it. And the following year, 2015, we did a production of A.R. Gurney's Sylvia, which had been suggested by Jonathan, who was a, who knew A.R. Gurney, a Pete, as he was called. And we did that at the Santa Fe Playhouse with Talis Rose doing an extraordinary performance as the dog. That again was enormously popular. It came very close to setting the all time attendance record of the Playhouse at that time. So the following year, we incorporated as a nonprofit uh, 501c3 corporation. I knew at the outset that there were two qualities that I wanted uh, a company to have. One was that we would commit to a season, a, a set of plays sold as a unit. The idea being that if you can get people committed to a a number of plays, you have a chance to offer them a variety of experiences that uh, will gradually elevate their taste and also establish a kind of identification uh, between that audience and uh, your theater group. The other quality that I wanted was it for it to be actor-centered. That is, we would pick plays that challenged and showcased the talents of our actors rather than deciding on shows and then going out and finding the actors, which is what uh, most theaters do. We found a home at the Teatro Paraguas, which was a small intimate space that we fell in love with. And uh, we did our first season there in 2016, uh, we did David Auburn's Proof, a very wonderful play about a, a 
woman who is the daughter of a famous mathematician who is losing his marbles. And she has, in fact, uh, created a tremendous theorem. Everyone assumes that it's her father's work. Uh, Talis played the, the lead, and her love interest was Jeffrey Pomeroy, who then became a, sta a stable member of, uh, of our group. Second play we did that year was uh, Driving Miss Daisy, <clears throat> which I had wanted to do for Suzanne Lederer and Tone Forrest. The third show that year, we all needed a three show season that first year, was Yasmin Riza's Art, which featured Nico, Nico and uh, Jonathan and Robert Knott, a, 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 a very prolific uh, and popular journalist uh, who also has a good acting background. Attendance exceeded our wildest expectations. I was directing all the plays at this time and uh, it fit in perfectly to my needs, my emotional needs, because I had been teaching for 51 years uh, and I had taken 15 years off as a movie producer when Ted Danson asked me to run his production company at Paramount. And I, it, it came at a perfect time because as my therapist told me, my learning curve had flattened and I was falling into a, a, a kind of despair. Uh, and the challenges of becoming a movie producer overnight were uh, just what I needed. Um, Eric Erickson, the psychologist who wrote uh, a, a, a very important book called uh, Identity and the Life Cycle, breaks uh, the development of the ego into uh, seven um, phases. And the last phase, which I was clearly in, the really important uh, conflict between, in, uh, between creativity, which he calls generativity, and despair. And that's right where I was in the conflict between despair and creativity. And the creation of lab really uh, gave me a creative outlet that I hadn't had for quite a while, having been a producer for 15 years and then having gone back to teaching at UNLV for six years before we came to Santa Fe. Uh, so I was, I was ripe for it. The second season in 2017, we started with The Glass Menagerie, which is a play that I had done several times before and just loved. And I wanted Suzanne Lederer to have a chance to play Amanda Wingfield. The second show was suggested by uh, Barbara Hatch and, and Nico. It was The Quality of Life, um, which was a, a, a very serious play about uh, adjustment to a terminal disease. And finally, uh, we did uh, Heisenberg which had been a, a, a very popular play in New York the year before. And that was with Jonathan Richards and Debriana Mancini. Heisenberg, which was a two character play, was done for the first time in tennis court staging. Uh, we needed more seats than the 56 seats that are available in the Teatro Paraguas. And so we wanted a way to put some seats up on the stage. And uh, Heisenberg had actually been done in tennis court staging in New York, where there's a bank of seats on the traditional side, and then there's another bank of seats at the uh, back of the stage so that the audience is facing each other. I really like that, same reason I like the thrust stage, because when the audience sees other audience members in the background of their view, it helps to remind them that they're in a theater, in a communal setting. That's very important to me as a director and as a theater maker. Uh, and it was a great deal of fun. Uh, the actors having a kind of long, narrow uh, playing space uh, are thrust together. Uh, it's, it's very much an actor's space because there's no capacity for 
scenery. And um, the actors had to develop, as it was natural to Jonathan and Debriana, a highly nuanced, naturalistic, almost filmic acting style. And that became the aesthetic of the New, Mar uh, New Mexico Actors Lab. Uh, almost from the very beginning, we we were the kinds of actors and loved the kinds of of plays that featured relationships, uh, the way in which people interact and affect one another. Drama is the only one of the arts that is really about the way in which people interact with one another, and so it is naturally political and involved with issues of social justice which are near and dear to my heart. It's why I do theater. Uh, that audience uh, attendance grew. Donations started to come in. Uh, we were gonna stick with uh, uh, a three-year season the next, but the next year, but the response was so strong that we decided to expand to a four-show season. So that 2018, uh, we did first The Gin Game uh, by Dio Coburn with uh, Jonathan and Suzanne, very demanding two-hander that takes place on the porch of an old people's home. And it was very a very moving experience for our older audience base. The second show that year was a, a risk for us. It was called Rapture Blister Burn by Gina Jean Frido. Uh, it was a, a feminist play and uh, it came off much better than, uh, than I could have helped, uh, hoped. Third show that year was Ages of the Moon. Now Sam Shepard had just died uh, earlier that year and we very much wanted to do an homage to him. Nico had known him, and he's done one of our memory videos about his relationship with Sam, which is very touching. And uh, Ages of the Moon, which uh, was just two actors, Nico and Paul Blott, an actor that I had met when I was working at the Fusion Theater in Albuquerque, um, like Suzanne Lederer, uh, he, he is an equity actor. So we use two or three equity actors uh, every, every year uh, as, as needed. Um, and that show was the most popular show we've ever done. It set the all time attendance record and we had to extend it. It sold out every one of 13 performances. We normally only do 12. Uh, and then we ended that season because uh, there were some elections coming up and we wanted to do something political. And Nico uh, chose to direct November by David Mamet, which is an Oval Office satire. That was the first play that I didn't direct. I had by this time directed all 11 of the shows that we had done. Nico and I had co-directed Quality of Life, but uh, November was the first show that I, I didn't direct at all. Uh, and then last year, uh, we again uh, wanted to do four shows. <clears throat> By this time, we were selling over 230 season tickets. Our attendance was well over 3,000 and uh, we were receiving a high level of donations without really trying very hard. Uh, so the growth was steady and exponential. So we wanted to do somewhat more challenging uh, plays. Uh, the first show was uh, uh, Lucas Nath's A Doll's House Part Two, which had been the hit of the New York season the year before, and I had a fight tooth and nail to get the rights to it. Again, we did it in tennis court staging uh, it, because I used the image of a, of, a ten, of a tennis match where they began at the baseline and gradually scene by scene moved into the net until the final climactic moment of the play. They came together uh, at the center. 
And after Nora had left, then uh, Nico Torvald uh, put the chairs back to where they had started uh, as if nothing had happened. And Nico uh, uh, directed uh, that second show, which was Harold Pinter's No Man's Land, uh, a play from 1975, not often done, although it had been revived the year before by my friend Patrick Stewart and Ian McCowan. Um, it's, it had become a standard tour de force for great uh, pairs of uh, British male actors. The first uh, production in 75 was Ralph Richardson and John Gielgud. It was interesting that um, Nico managed to play Torvald in Dow's house while simultaneously directing No Man's Land and then playing one of the leads in No Man's Land directly after Dow's House Part Two, something I could never have even dreamt of doing. Um, the, the next show was Stopped Kiss, uh, which Barbara Hatch had done as a reading in the previous winter. And uh, she's just finished a wonderful video memory that is available to you uh, about that production and about the reading. Uh, the readings are very important to us. They give us a chance to have a year-round presence in Santa Fe. We offer one a month throughout the winter, and uh, it also gives us the opportunity to try out material to see if it works for us. Uh, and about two or three shows a, a, a year in the summer seasons began as readings, uh, both uh, Stop Kiss and 4,000 Miles last year had begun as readings. And, uh, and the final show last, uh, last year was 4,000 Miles by Amy Herzog, which was a play that Suzanne Lederer had brought to us because she really wanted to play uh, uh, Vera, the, the lead in that. And uh, a, a young man named Mickey Dolan, a recent graduate of NMSA, and who had actually attended Cal Arts for a short time, uh, uh, joined our group and, and will again become a regular member of our, of our acting company. Uh, we also did uh, rather quickly at the end of the season, a staged reading of Robert Schenken's The Investigation, which is an adaptation of the Mueller report. We love to do uh, these political uh, pieces and we did that at the Swan Theater, uh, the former Adobe Rose Theater, uh, just for uh, two performances in one day. <clears throat> but we felt we were doing our civic duty with, with that one. In 2019, Nico and I had been serving as co-artistic directors, and I had uh, recently turned 80 and decided that the time was right for me to turn the reins completely over to Nico. So he became artistic director and at the end of that season and I uh, stepped back into the role of managing director. And together we started uh, thinking about a big season for the following year. And our hopes were very high. We, with, uh, we, we announced our season early. A bunch of season tickets got sold. Donations were rolling in. And then so did the COVID-19 pandemic. And in phases, first, uh, we canceled uh, the, the first uh, two shows. And then we canceled the third show. And then finally, we canceled the last two shows. And so there we are now with no income, but some fixed costs that we've got to cover. Uh, but most of all, uh, terrible disappointment that our momentum uh, and uh, our growing audience base uh, is put on hold for a year. We fully expect 
that everything will start up again good next year. We'll do most of the plays that we had planned to do, but we might change a couple of them to acknowledge changing circumstances next year. Uh, and uh, our, our hopes are very high uh, for 2021. And in 2022, who knows, if all goes as we hope, uh, we'll reach our final goal of a six-show year-round season, perhaps with uh, a facility of our own. Who, who knows? Uh, so uh, thank you for your support and for your interest in watching these uh, videos. And uh, we hope to see you face-to-face, -face, with or without masks, next year. Bye-bye.